right, guys. All right, we're back for yet another show. Carly, can you put the announcement up? I didn't ask you. The one I already did? Yeah, yes, that absolutely. One. That announcement. Confirmed? Oh, she fixed it. Well done. Um, of course I did. I'm amazing. You are amazing. All right, so... I'm going to skip over that last week even happened. Um, <laughs> so, there was football games. I think they happened... That's all we should say. Uh, straight up against, straight up, we all sucked. We were all five hundred seven and seven uh, against the spread. I sucked. Everybody else was better. Uh, Striker was eight and six. Uh, Ripper was ten and four. Um, uh, just Panthers and Bears. Let's not even talk about it. Um, they're going nowhere. Uh, Colts and Patriots. The Patriots are terrible for the first time in forever. Uh, Texans beat a, uh, Texans are plucky. Uh, they beat the Bengals. Um, Saints and Vikings, who cares? Um, I, Vikings have a good record, so I guess we do care, but um, Packers and so, a decent record. Let's go with decent record. And Joshua Dobbs. I, I'm not going to say it. Um, no, you don't have to, but I'm going to ask you who, what practice or what squad did Joshua Dobbs start training camp with this year? Cleveland Browns. Yes, sir. I saw her. Cle- Sorry. Cleveland traded him to Arizona, who then traded him to Minnesota. Well, I mean, but he's been with Pittsburgh, he's been with Jackson. Do you realize that Jacksonville at one point had some of the greatest backups of all time? We had Foles, Minshew, and Dobbs and Henny all in the same quarterback room. And that was like two years ago. That's four backup quarterbacks and zero starting quarterbacks. Um, the Steelers. I do have one oh, one ahead. more stat. Sorry, uh, it's Colts Patriots. So the Patriots have lost literally half the games they have they lost during the total Tom Brady career in the last two years. So eighteen years so like versus all, two. Yep. And I'm here for it. Uh, okay. Steelers beat the Packers. The Steelers, man, they're six and three. Um, head scratcher on that one, but they are. Uh, the Titans beat the Bucks. Called it. Uh. <laughs> So that was that was one I I'm I'm happy uh the Titans didn't uh, go the, like the, you're you're wrong. The Bucks beat the Bucks beat the Titans, not the Titans beat the Bucks. That's yeah. what I that's what, I had that in my head. I'm looking at the sheet and I said it even with, even though I didn't say it right. Um point point is I'm glad the Titans didn't uh every time I pick against the Titans they win, so glad I didn't jinx that one. Uh the 49ers team won. I don't know who they were playing. Uh, the Browns won and broke Deshaun Watson. Or the Ravens broke Deshaun Watson, but what a comeback with a broken arm. Uh, the Cards beat the Falcons. I told I should have pulled the trigger on the little man. I just didn't. Damn it. Uh, if I had known it was Pat Tillman Day, I would have. Totally missed that one. Uh, Lions over the Chargers. Cowboys in their twice annual beat down with the Giants. Um, Seahawks beat the Commanders, and wow, uh, wow, that was close. Uh, Raiders beat the Jets, and the Broncos upset the Bills on Monday night. Um, and Tuesday morning, the Bills' offensive coordinator was fired. Yeah, that's not the problem, though. The Bills got no. I so um, obviously I. <sighs> So the the Jacks 49ers game, the recap of the Jacks 49ers game is, um, like I said all year long, the Jags offensive line is bad. And I don't know why it doesn't get more press. Um, even the point in like the papers, they're talking about um what they need for next year, and they pick a wide receiver. No, they need they need guard and or tackles. Um probably two guards and a tackle. Um it's obvious. Chase and and, and I don't know how many offensive lines can hold up Chase and Bosa and the 14 other 49er stars on defense, but the, we there was there was no prayer in hell. So I think Lawrence got I know Lawrence got sacked north of five because it was five at one point in the game. Um, he had no time to throw the ball. The running game was non-existent because they were they were in the backfield before the handoff. So um, that, ladies and gentlemen, hey. is, is how you lose ball games. Like. If you can't block, you're you're done. 
He only got sacked five times, but yeah. So, I mean, it may have been one of those he got sacked five times, but there were people in his face. I don't, every, everyone, like he did not have a clean pocket. Um, uh, and then we talked about the Jets and the Raiders. And I said, we we're going to cover that again. Um, they're two terrible offenses, right? I think there's three terrible offenses in the league right now. The other one being the Giants. Those are, those are bad. So, um, anything you guys want to talk about? Uh, no. The <laughs> Cowboys 17 point cover does not change anything in your mind, does it? No, not really, man. I, I, it's not like we were playing a great team to start off with, right? Yeah. If they did that again, say like the 49ers or the Eagles or someone like that, ooh, I'd be impressed. But nope. I did like seeing Cooks out there catch the ball, but again, against a soft secondary, just him and Lamb both had really good uh, days. I had Lamb in the money league, and his 30-point day did not offset the fact that the entire Chiefs squad on my team was on by. So <laughs> can, we're, can we talk about that? We're that all – that everybody's – Everyone's six five, and five, five or, and five. Yeah, and then there's two people six yeah. and three, and I think there's one at, like, four and five. Which there's is a, two at six and four, two at four and six, and everybody else is five and five. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's a good league. It, it is. There's some stiff competition. I, I, I don't know that I can hold on. I'm just I'm holding on with duct tape and bailing wire. And I've got some I, I've got some home run wide receivers too. Like they, the funny they part is I, home runs. I'm uh, the most points scored, I believe. No, uh Zach Zika virus has the most points scored. He's last. I'm the most second the most points scored and I am in fifth, sixth. I don't get that though. You have like one of the least points against for you too, like eight hundred and sixteen. <laughs> Thanks, Strix. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, when you suck, you suck. So. Well, no, it's 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 some some weeks <laughs> they they bad. they, they the, it, it's, it's bad luck. It's fancy, you know. It's fantasy. Sometimes they bunch up, like you you know. It'd be nice. It, <laughs> I've had weeks where I'm like, wow, we've just blown that guy out, and then you know someone goes off for 20 more points, and you're like, man, you could you could save that for next week. Yeah, he did. Uh, Ripper has had a couple of teams just lay absolute eggs against him. I played horrible. This is, I, I'm not doing great. This is the first year I could say in a long time that I don't do great in fantasy football. But it's your running backs, to, right? It's everything. It's not just this I, team. I, it's across the board. I'm not I, doing I don't know. If you guys were to redraft this year, is there a running back? Who are your top no. two running backs? I mean, I mean McCaffrey's still, still up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah C Mac for sure. But he was he was long. He was gone number one, so... <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't have drafted Josh Allen this year. I would have left, let him go. I hung on to him, you know, because you can hang on to one player in this league. I would have let him go. I, If I had known... I, I, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have kept Mahomes. Yeah, some years it pays off, right? Yeah. You know, that's... Uh, I mean, Josh Allen, I don't know what year it was, but they, they do pay off, and some they don't. Well, and this is a quarterback-heavy scoring league. Like, if I go look at my highest score on just mine, I mean, Correct. I had Justin Fields throw two two of my higher point games, and so for me, my wins are all. I'm wins thinking. Where my I think you Freudian slipped that one. No, I didn't actually. I had you, you a said he, thirty-five point. You said he threw. Oh, he, th- he, yeah. he 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 ran. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, in yeah. all fairness, at least one of those was a game he did throw a couple of good touchdowns, but. Can we talk about Buffalo against Denver? Jesus. All right. Will the real Buffalo or will the will 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 the real Denver team stand up? Because they've beaten the Chiefs twice, right? They've beaten the Bills. They've also had some stinkers. Like, are they? They're they're a five and five team. That like, are they good or are they bad? Uh, offensively, I don't think they're bad. If they had last year's defense and this year's offense, oh my god, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think they know their real identity. One week they're yeah. great, and one week they play like they should be, you know, JV team at some college. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you go look at it though, that's Sean Payton, right? He has never had good defensive teams. Oh, 
when you had Williams, he had good defensive teams. They may yeah, have I mean, been pounding people. I, I mean, know. so but but the thing though is when you get up by twenty one points, you know you expect the other team to throw, so you can peel the ears back and or but pin the ears back and. But just... that's their 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 Achilles is their secondary. They don't have a very good. I, secondary. I was talking about Pey- Peyton's old team, not not the Saints or the oh. Saints, not the Broncos currently. Can we talk about Russell Wilson not throwing picks? I mean, he was twenty four for twenty nine. Not a lot of yardage, but no picks. Two TDs. And they ran all over the Chiefs. Oh, and he looked, he was making good decisions. He was not playing hero ball. Well, Sean Payton, right? Yeah, that's all Sean Payton. Did I, I did catch something, though, this on that, because I did watch that game. Um, and they said he had lost about 15 pounds from last year. And I remember his last couple of years in Seattle and his last year in Denver where he looked big. And he kept saying, well, I'm bulking up because I'm going to take more hits. And now that he's slowed him down a little bit, he's running faster. Or at least he looks faster. Maybe he's not actually faster, but I the eye test says he is. So let's dunk it down. First year, it was first year in Denver. The weed is legal. You know, yeah. there's the some cheese afterwards. Hey, Daniel, I want to say hi to you. Sorry about that. Uh, Couldn't help it. Correct. The munchies. All right. Okay. Um, was that the music portion of the show? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Brought to you by our sponsors. Wait, we don't have any. Uh, um, <laughs> we got uh, the Bengals fresh off their egg with the Ravens fresh off their egg. And the who can have a bigger egg? Boy. I really thought, well, I kind of called that game Texans and the Bengals. I, I, I knew they weren't going to cover, right? Yep. I should just outright pick the Texans, though. They're a plucky team. I was a little disappointed on the overall play in that game. It just, I don't know if it was the Texans or just Burrow wasn't. I don't know. Let's put up the stats on that game because that was kind of a weird one. Well, Thank and, and maybe he's not fully back, right? Like maybe he had like a short sporadic sprint. I mean, Burrow was twenty seven for forty, three forty seven, two touchdowns, two picks, sacked four times. I mean, that's not terrible. I mean the picks are bad, but that's not terrible numbers in the grad school. Not at all. That's Stroud really was twenty three for thirty nine for three fifty six at a touchdown and a pick and one sack. So just no defense? Like neither team had defense? Yep. Well, Stroud looked good, though, man. I'm, I'm saying he's, this. Does he's look. definitely going for a rookie of the year. I think he, I think he, unless there's some, like, 14 interception games coming up, um, I think he's got in the bag. I think the biggest problem was Cincinnati had no defense. Obviously, the Texans didn't do great either, but Devin Singletary ran all over him. It's crazy. Anyways, back to the game. <laughs> um, it, it's all going to boil down to again if the if the Bengals can play defense. If they can't, then the Ravens are going to run all over them with uh, Jackson Edwards and there's another one, right, Mitchell or something like that. Yeah, the the guy that came on, pretty correct. good. Uh, if the Bengals don't play defense, they're going to run all over them in a big way. And again, you know, Jackson, albeit he's not throwing a lot of passes, a seventy percent completion rate. Yeah, which is great. Which leads the league, right? Yeah, but he only has 2,100 yards. 2,177, 10 touchdowns, and five picks. So he's not throwing a lot, but when he is, he's completed, right? Uh, either way, though, if the Bengals cannot put up a some kind of defensive front to stop the run, the Ravens will definitely run all over him because they do have a running game, both at quarterback and running back. I'm going to – what's the cover of spread? Oh, three and a half to Ravens hate to say it, and I know we were all rooting for Burrow to come back, so on and so forth, but something's just not right with the with the Bengals, whether it's a quarterback or it's a defense or whatnot. Uh, they also can't get it together, so I'm going to go with the Ravens on this one to cover. Ravens by four. Um, It's in Baltimore. Uh, I I don't know why they lost last week um there were some some hinky things going on in that game um 
but I the way it's just too easy to run the ball, right? And the Bengals don't seem to be able to stop it very well. So, um, and when you got it coming from the quarterback position, that's a whole new, whole new level. And then his efficiency is so good, he can move the chain. You know, basically what they're playing is they're playing this game of you know get three yards on first, get three yards on second, on third. 70% completion pass, you know, seven out of 10 third down conversion rate, you're, you're going to be marching down the field, right? Um, that's what the Ravens do, let alone when they break a big one or, or something like that. So I don't see, I don't, again, you're right. I don't think Joe's right. I don't think the Bengals can't do anything else. They can't run the ball. They can't play defense very well. Um, I think it's going to be too easy for the Ravens. Plus it's at home. Um, I'll take the Ravens to cover. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I'm gonna watch this game because I think it's gonna be a great game. But I don't see the Bengals uh, doing well in this game, and it's as simple as the defensive difference, right? Like the Ravens have a pretty awesome defense this year. Um, the Bengals do not. The Bengals are second worst in the league in uh, yards allowed per play, and down in the bottom third in expected points contributed by I don't for all the defense. And I mean, it's just it's not good numbers and Lamar's going to have a, have a field day. I, I am actually a little surprised Ravens at home by three and a half, which is basically a half a point, right? That, that surprises me that Vegas is thinking that, but, well, the, but these two, the, I mean, these teams know each other. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think this is going to be a close game. And I mean, Burrow's not going to, he's not going to go. He's, he's a winner. He's not going to go down, you know, without a swing. So I I think they're right on the spread. In fact, it kind of it's it's again you know you, you get that three and a half. That three and a half is the half, the half is the problem, right? So, um, yeah, I, th- I think the spread is right. I expect a close game. With that being said, I think it's just the chances of the Ravens playing their their game and winning are just it's too high. It's too easy to to run. Um, their chances are too great. So we all went Ravens across the board. Yay us. Schedule. That concludes the second song and dance portion of the the evening. Um, All right. Next, we got the Steelers taking on the Sub Browns, and the Browns are favored by Uno Point with uh, our favorite client. Getting a, a broken. So the question I have is, when did he break his shoulder? Well, no means no. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh boy, he set that one up. So he's out, right? He is out for the he's, year. He took. He did surgery, I believe. I keep talking about plucky teams like the Texans and like the Steelers per se, man. I mean, six and three is nothing to sneeze at right now. They're six and three, as are the Browns. Two teams we thought were going to have struggles and problems have both uh, been plucky enough to win games anyways, right? The Browns having more problems than any with it. Well, I guess both of them really have quarterback situations, if you think about it. Um, Pickett isn't that great, let's be honest. I, I don't see him as the starting quarterback of the Steelers next year, but we'll see. Uh, is he starting? Wasn't he hurt? I mean, he's been hurt all year, so. Yeah, I don't think he's on the injury report. Yeah, he's not on the injury report. So and who's starting he's... for uh, the Browns? Pe- peanut butter? It should be peanut butter. Oh, boy. How did peanut butter do last week? Although the One pass. Depth chart, ESPN's depth chart currently says Dorian Thompson Robinson, so. Yeah, Watson. Watson played the whole game. Walker had one with a broken shoulder. Yes. Wow. I mean, he threw thirty-four times. Was it the non-throwing arm shoulder? I I don't know. They had some good running games too, though. Ford, Watson, Cream Hunt—they all ran for some yardage. It's a tough team, tough game to go by. So man. honestly, I it, think it was his throwing shoulder. By the way. It... The break was in his throwing shoulder, and I actually remember the play where. Was it at the end? Sure or the, where, where was it in the game? 
it was about halfway through <laughs> there was a well no there was a play where he went off to the sideline and kind of stayed down for an extra second or two and looked like he was stretching his groin out and i remember <laughs> making a jo- I, exactly i remember making that exact joke like, well no means uh, no Right, and but I mean that's the only time where he broken looks... shoulder, dude. Like you can say right. what you want, the dude's tough. Like right, and it is going to be the rookie, by the way, starting for the Browns. The coach has come well, out and said. Well, the good thing about be... the Browns is their defense, right? Like yeah. their defense, hands down, can play some football. Um, not necessarily last week when they gave up thirty-one points, but they are a good defensive game. Now, is Pittsburgh good enough offensively to move the ball on the Browns like the Ravens did? That's the big question. Pittsburgh right now has a, a tandem, I guess you can call a running back duo, right, in Warren and Harris. Uh, both are doing not bad at all, right? They're both moving the ball. Together, they're equal into one good running back. <laughs> well, the it's running back by committee, right? Yeah. The question is finding the, that timing where that works for both guys, right? <laughs> Well, the question is, is anybody going to throw the ball here? And I think that's where the Browns have the advantage over the Steelers, right? I mean, it, Pittsburgh doesn't throw the ball very well. When you're playing a team like Baltimore, there's the threat of Lamar throwing, running, and then you have the running back. So it's hard to play defense against a team like that, whereas the Steelers are not that team, right? Pickens isn't Lamar. Let's start with that. What? Uh, he doesn't have a 70% completion percentage. He can run like the wind? <laughs> no, what? <I> <laughs> He can't even throw, apparently. He only has 1,600 yards, you know, 10 games into the season. That's nine games anyways, 10 games now. But, yeah, they're not looking great. I think they're they're going to be a little one-dimensional with just the run game. Um, even though Johnson and Pickens have been coming along lately, I don't think it's enough. I think the Browns' defense is what's going to be the big difference here. I think as far as the quarterback, all they're really going to do it's hand off the ball. How did uh, Watson last week? He did, did pretty well. Twenty for thirty-four, two thirteen, one touchdown, one pick. Hmm. I don't know anything about this rookie. You know, we've seen Peanut Butter Walker play a little bit, but we don't really know much about who was it you say it was? Stedham? No, it's uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson. Never heard of her. So we'll see how that turns out. I, I think that the Ra- the Browns defense is enough to stop the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to go with Browns, and they're probably. What? They're favored Three by point? Uno point. Uno point. I'll definitely take the Browns to cover. So, uh, the problem is I don't know what's going to happen on the rookie side. <laughs> Let's on the Pittsburgh side. You know what's going to happen, right? They are going to shut down the run, and they're going to be like, "Rookie, we got this guy named Watt, and he's going to come after you, and you're a statue in the pocket." So. Once we shut down the running game and we make you throw, you're probably going to panic and throw something stupid. Um, on the flip side, I got no clue what this rookie's going to do. Um, and that may, but, but but on the on you know if you go back to 1960s ball, I'd take the Browns defense and the Browns running game over the Pittsburgh's defense and the Pittsburgh's running game. So um, I I'm going to go with the Browns. I'll I'll do Browns too. So, yeah, this this kid is the the Cleveland Browns rookie. He's he was the UCLA quarterback, fifth round pick. Um, and I mean he he's got good college numbers, but you know we all know how that translates, lack thereof, or you know I mean like it's hard to even compare, right? The thing is, I don't think he's as um, statuesque as as it looks like based on what the the highlights I'm seeing. Uh, that being said. I don't see Pittsburgh moving the ball, and I think that's going to be the bigger problem. So, um, Browns, Browns cover, and yeah, it's going to be a boring, boring, you know, fourteen ten game or something like that. Steelers win. <laughs> so that's, right. uh, that's how that one's going to go. So, <laughs> congratulations, Pittsburgh fans. We just brought you a win. Yeah, really. We just jinxed the whole thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, we got the. Bears at the Lions, and the Lions are favored by only eight points. It's kind of surprising to me. This is a divisional game. Um, it is. I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis into this game. I think the Bears are terrible. I know we say that, and then they go with this, you know, receiver that nobody has on their roster going for three touchdowns, so on and so forth. I don't see it. I'm still waiting for Rashawn or what's his name, Johnson, to bust out. Not happening. 
I do believe they get Khalil Herbert back though, right? They've got they have not activated him yet, or at least I didn't catch them having activated him. Uh, he was a limited participant on um, today's practice, so he. But I don't think I think he's still in that I- IR to return status. I don't think the Bears have the defense to stop the Lions. The Lions' run game and pass game is is really phenomenal right now. Uh, they're moving the ball both on the ground in the air. Uh, that rookie running back guy, uh, was it Gibbs? Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs. Great little running back, man. And they have Montgomery back. I think Montgomery's back, right? He should be back, yeah. Both are very good. Although although they're running, they have said they're basically going to be running um, Gibbs. Gibbs, primarily. They have my all-time favorite uh, Egyptian receiver. But that that happens all the time. When you get those rookies and you get a veteran... They let the veterans start off until they make sure the the rookie can do blitz packages and not fumble and things like that. And then generally the rookies, they're like, okay, let let the rookie go. You know what, though? I've noticed a trend in the NFL, and you probably already know it also, but you do get a lot of these lately rookie running backs that come out and they're just a boom, 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 boom for a couple of years and they're done. Yeah. Um, I think there's the... Special running back that lasts a few years, and then there's a running back that gets so banged up in the NFL and it's so different that they just can't last. And some of these guys, again, you know, the next McCaffrey, the next big-time running back is out there, but how many times have we seen a rookie running back like Gibbs come out for a couple of seasons and then they, they're gone or they're a backup somewhere, like Hunt and stuff like that? So many times. Yeah. I, I wonder if it's because of the stature. Because let's face it, running backs are not the biggest – Biggest out there, right? Correct. Uh, so they're and generally they, and those... the NFL is bigger and stronger than it has been. Correct. And so you're just getting hammered, 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 hammered all the time, and and you you know the body can only take so much of that. I think it's almost like your bigger bodied running backs are lasting longer, like uh, King Henry, man. I mean, yeah. I still think he's going to break down eventually all the beatings he takes, but he's still there, right? Well, but I mean, you but you, he breaks down backs. after a decade, not after three years, right? Correct, correct. A good that's a that's a good lifespan for a running back. Ten years. That's a great running back. Well he lifespan. breaks down after he's made enough money that he doesn't have to work ever again, where some of these rookies aren't, you know, they're playing on rookie contracts that aren't really gonna set them for the rest of their lives. Correct. And that's the thing though, right? Yeah, they'll only order, have, you know, ten million. Yeah, but in order to reach that big paycheck <laughs> that they want, they have to sacrifice their bodies, right? Like yeah, they have to right. go through the the bang, bang, bang because they want to get to that what is a rookie contract? Four years, five years? Depends, Depends on five when you're drafted, if you're yeah. a first round or four and otherwise. Yeah, or so three, wanna, I think, after the fourth round. They want to get to that contract so they can, you know, their value and their worth is up there so they can get that big payday. And then after that, it's like, all right, well, now I'm going to start praying like a prima donna and be careful and everything else because I don't have to sacrifice my body anymore. I've got the money. I don't know. Do we see a downgrade based on cash? What do you mean? As- Look at uh, I mean, Kamara. Kamara I just, got a big contract and he went downhill. I'm just wondering if there's a correlation. I, I don't think Kamara was right for... Uh, <laughs> I don't think giving Kamara the big contract was the right move, but that's a whole nother. But he's a but great, he's a great I, 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 So you get... It's two schools of thought, right? You've got the school of thought. It's a business and I need to... Treat it as a business and there's no loyalty, right? And then there's some, I think there's some owners, I, I think for, for, I think this is actually one of his more endearing qualities and I don't think he's got a lot, but the Cowboys owner, Jerry Jones, I think he was loyal to Zeke. Like, I think he gave him a contract that was out of line of what he should have got. Um, but I think that was out of loyalty. And I think he thought back to, you know, we had the tri- the triplets back in the day. I'm going to do the same thing with this group and, and, and he did right. And, and then until, you know, basically at the end, Zeke was, wasn't doing very well in Dallas. But let's be honest, Jerry, if you're going to get into that, Jerry Jones has done that too many times. You're, you're giving contracts and guys that just aren't doing anything for us. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, but that's, Zeke, that's the football yeah. business mentality. You know, the human being aspect goes, this guy, you know, was underpaid the first X amount of years. And, he was running his tail off for us. I'm going to give him some loyalty. But the problem is the NFL contract and salary cap isn't designed to, to be that way, right? You are you can only give so much to so many people, and then you're out of cap space. Yep. 
and you got to be like Brady, right? Where you're the elite teams are teams with, with guys on rookie contracts and guys that are taking pay cuts. Well, yeah, but supermodels who, correct, who take the cuts. Not everybody's married to a billion dollar model, right? That is correct. You know, these guys, they're the sole providers for their family and everyone else. So they make it big. It's tough. You got to, you got to understand some of these guys, a lot of these guys, a lot of NFL players came from different kind of means, right? Yeah. Whether they're poor, some middle class, a lot of them though were 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 projects and stuff like that, right? They were they lived poor. So they're when they make it, man, they're not just making it for themselves. It's mama, it's grandpa, it's dad, it's mom, you know. The list goes on of how many people are depending on them money Uncle, wise. Uncle Rico. Yeah. So, so so back to the bears and the poor the poor the poor bears no. and the lions. My bad. The lions cover. The lions cover. <laughs> we were we were kind of tangenting on a game we should not tangent. Um so Lions by nine. I'm going Lions by nine. Striker. Uh so Lions win, but I think this is gonna be a closer game than you think. I'm gonna actually have the uh, Lions not cover this one. Lions by four. Yeah. Can I, we bring I back just... the uh the SFP? <laughs> you really I mean, think you that? can. I of of all the games to not cover, this does not seem like the matchup. And I would this is one I would be I would be eighty percent sure you're wrong on this. So you know what we, though? He may be right. Not because it's a divisional right. game. Foreman, not just that, Foreman's running like an animal. If they reinstate Herbert, there's an add on. Moore's good. Uh Komet's had some a couple of good games lately. It really is does fall down to whether Fields is playing the role of running back or quarterback. If he's pretending to be a quarterback, they have a better chance. If well, he's a running back, mm. but what are the two teams? I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess, and I have no knowledge. I'm gonna guess the Lions average somewhere around 30 points a game, and I'm gonna guess the Bears are down in the teens. I'm not saying they're gonna beat the Lions. I'm saying he might be close. He might be a little correct on the non-cover. But I'm not going to take that chance. I'm definitely think the Lions are going to come win this one by. What's the eight? Is the spread? Eight spread, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think they're going to win by ten. But I mean, may the, be right. The points for difference is uh, less than so less than a touchdown between the two teams. No, no, no. And I said what is difference? What what are the what are the Bears' points. average scoring a game? The Bears average twenty, basically twenty one, twenty point four. And the Lions, the Lions average twenty twenty six point eight. Ah, the lines are a little low from what I thought. Yeah, I they, they, they've been coming on lately. I'm surprised that the I I thought the lines were I thought the lines actually might be a little higher than thirty. So that's kind Let's of let's put it this way. I'm starting Goff over Allen this week. Well, well, I mean, I'd be starting Uncle Rico over Allen this week. So <laughs> well, that is uh, <laughs> who the hell is that? <laughs> Uncle Rico over. Where are they at? Bills, 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 Bills. Who are the Bills playing? The Jets. Ah, the Jets. You know, three interception Jets. Ah. Uh, I think they'll do that again, but ugh, Allen's just been playing horrible. What's going on? Well, he'll have a new offense to figure out. That ought to help him out. No, because <laughs> they promoted the uh, quarterback's coach, so. Ah. Uh, They're not going to change same, the offense. Using the same book. Hi, Sensor. Uh, yeah, so what I what I what I've heard was that Allen doesn't do a lot of playbook studying, and so he needs kind of the instruction Uh-oh. to be looked at. Right? Did they like, give him a blank tape? No, they didn't do the Jamarcus move, <laughs> the purple drank move. Damn. All righty then. So we're all on the Lions, except for Striker, who says Lions but not covering. Correct. Nice. Bold move, my friend. Bold move. Bold move, Cotton. All right. Uh, hey, censored. Uh, striker is. Uh, I'm striker. Chargers and the Packers, or the Strikers at the Packers. Why the Strikers? I don't know, because it was in my head. No reason at all. Well, I'd like to start off with saying Jordan Love is not the man. Once again, I think I've said that a million times. Still, does not look like the man Can, to me. Fifty-eight point so, seven percent. Multiple people have said it's not love. It is Lafleur. How? Love is the one throwing the ball. He has a fifty-eight percent completion rate. Yeah, but you're a coach. Do you throw? Do you throw to your, what your quarterback's 
strengths or weaknesses are? Strengths, obviously. Obviously. Uh, LaFleur does not seem to do that. Because if he would, well, number one, guess what he, he would be doing is using the quarterback's best friend, which is known as the running game. I'm telling Maybe. you, there's a lot of videos out there that they're like, look, it's not this kid's fault. He's he's doing what he's supposed to. They're just bl bad play calls. I guess it's I don't the first like the flaw Warthog that... is, uh, I don't like the Warthog is actually making a really good argument here using well, statistics. I guess it's that the that bothers first me just a little bit. Oh, it's not statistics. It's, so, first of all, basketball. let me explain to you. My son is a Packers fan. So, son, oh, okay. son with House is a Packers fan. So, we talk about it, and he actually showed me some videos where they're showing some of the stuff that they're doing. And I'm like, well, this, this doesn't look good, but it's a Packers thing. So I don't really like, if it was a Jags, I'd be very interested in it. It's a Packers. So I'm like, eh. Well, I guess, uh, the flirt is the reason love is throwing shitty passes. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not, but again, we've seen, um, again, you saw Allen when he started, he was throwing terrible passes. You know, is it the quarterback or is it the system? And there's some, Sometimes that they, 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 you know, you, again, you know how this is. You, you can, these guys are all talented quarterbacks. Sometimes they're dumber than a brick. If you got them doing five reads, they're not going to do well. If you tell them, you know, Hey, you know, like I've, I've heard there were certain quarterbacks that ran very well that they split the field and said, basically, you know, <clears throat> rhymes with rhymes with young. Um, if you split the field and just throw to the, one of these two guys, we're good. If it's not there, tuck the ball and run. Well, I mean, that's basically what they gave the Allen instructions a couple of years ago was first read, not there. Don't be a hero. Check it down. That's what I give my quarterback. Two reads and go, baby. Two reads and go. He doesn't have the time. I don't have the line nor the time for him to sit there and get down to the third read. Yeah. So you got, I mean, you got guys like Martz. I remember Martz was famous for not leaving tight ends back in. Hell, hell uh, last week against the 49ers, you know what the Jags were doing with against those two beasts? How many, how many times we had single backfields? That's a no, no. We had one tight end set with no back. That's a no, no. Like you've got two elite pass rushers, chip the guys. It, you, it doesn't matter if you have five people in the pattern, if your quarterback's on his back, right? Like that's just stupid play, play calling. So March used to do the same thing. So I, again, I think it's the coach. I, I don't think it's all I, – and, again, I, I still think he should be doing better than what he is, but I think the coach should be running those running backs a lot more, and he should be trying to convert on third downs. But neither here nor there. Maybe, baby. Maybe, baby. But for this game, <laughs> uh, uh, to me it's kind of – I know Herbert should be the better quarterback here, but I'm not very impressed with him either, to be honest. He does have 17 touchdowns and only five picks. I don't know what it is about him this year. To me, he seems downgraded. But then again, that's just me, in my opinion. Well, because his his running Eckler isn't doing what he did. Correct. Yeah, he no, lost a, a weapon on. Uh, it was Williams, right? That's that's the weapon yeah. they lost. I mean, that explains most of it. And then the flip side, their defense has taken a huge step back. Yeah. I still think they're good enough to beat the Packers because I don't believe in Jordan Love. So I'm going to – what's the spread here? Chargers by three. Even that, I'm hesitant to take the Chargers. <laughs> I think the Packers' defense is a little bit better than, than the Chargers' defense to start off with that. Uh, the Chargers do have a better pass game, but they have zero run game. Whereas, if, like you said, if the floor just puts it in <laughs> banks on the running game, it could make a big difference, right? Which Dylan is back, so I don't. I think he didn't have a. I mean, Dylan uh, Jones. Jones. I mean, I he, he was. Game he's game. got. A, he had a hammy, so you know how those kind of linger. So they. I don't think they were running him a lot the first few games he was back, but I, he should be darn near 100 percent right now. Let's see what he did last week. He not, not a lot to write home. Lot. Dylan ran more. Dylan was nine for seventy. Not bad. It's an average of seven point seven yards a carry. That is very nice. Yeah, and they ran him really, nine times. Yeah, that was really one long run and then a bunch of little... Correct. Like, you take that 40-yard out, and it's eight carries for 30 yards. That's not exactly a, uh, something to write home about. Say that one again, eight for 30? Eight for... Th or eight carry 30 yards, eight carries. Yeah, that's still you know, not terrible. <laughs> the lack of run game here, though, really concerns me. The lack of run game for Herbert. 
his receivers, all he really has left is Allen. I know he's got uh, Palmer, who was hurt, correct? I don't know. Looking that up, I'm not sure if he's actually. I'm going to go with the Chargers winning this one. Allen is questionable with a shoulder. Oh, hold on. <laughs> well, you take out your only real weapon, and there's a whole big difference, right? Yeah. Uh, I, and you know, his my, top two tight ends are questionable, too. So My gut tells me that the Packers defense can help him win, but you're right. If it's the head coach calling a sh- uh, bad offense, and you've got a run game you're not using, and your your love isn't in. The, you're saying the right system to win. I'm going to stick with the Chargers and Chargers. What's the spread? Four. Char- yeah. Chargers. Oh, get the, get the Chargers by three. So you have Chargers. Chargers by four. three. Chargers cover in my book. Uh, so I, I, I. This is one of the teams I cannot like. They're better than their record, and again, their coach is jacking it up. Uh, I. The flip side, the Chargers' defense is terrible. Like, yeah, I, I terrible. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't think, even with Lafleur messing it up, the the Chargers are good enough to stop them, and then they're banged up on offense. So, I, I, it's it's in Green Bay. I'm gonna go with the Packers. So. Who does he side with and who? Yeah. yeah. The, problem, the problem is, is I could flip a coin on this one and, and you know, it's, it's a truly a 50, 50 game in my book. Like, yeah, the chargers theoretically have a best, better offense, but then you start looking at, you know, what their capability is, you know, health wise. Um, and then, so what it comes down to me simply is the over under is 44 points. Do I think that happens? Because if it happens, I think the Chargers win. I think if it's over 44, the Chargers win. If it's under, then I think Green Bay gets a real big chance. And and I don't, I don't think there's going to be a high scoring game. So I'm going to take the Packers on this one. Swing the striker. Uh. I don't feel any less bad about the pick. I still think it's in Lambeau. That should that should swing it. And I don't yeah. I don't think this will be a high scoring game. And that being said, the Chargers will score fourteen points in the first five minutes of the game, and I'll kick the couch. And then not score the rest of the game. You'll be in the well, yeah. <laughs> nah, well, I have forty percent bone mass. I won't break anything. Um okay, the next game on the slate is the Raiders. Getting shillelaid by the Dolphins. The Dolphins are 13.5 point favorites. Dolphins and the Raiders. Uh, I, I, I don't think the Raiders have nor the offense nor the defense to stop anything the Dolphins do. Uh, especially not the defense to stop the Dolphins. Uh, I they think could definitely their... stop the Gatorade exchange. Yeah, maybe. They're 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 gonna have their way with this one. Not a seventy point way like they did against uh, with mm. Denver, which again, wow, right? Denver plays off and on. But anyways, I don't think they'll have that kind of day. But they're definitely gonna have a good day here. What's the spread? It's probably a double digit spread. Isn't Thirteen it? and a half. Thir- I figured. I, I'm gonna say yeah. I think the Dolphins will cover here by fourteen. I, I don't think the defense on the Raiders is horrible. Their offense is really just I don't know what it is to be honest. Doesn't look good at all. The only real shining bright spot there is Jacobs, and even that's iffy. Um, I think the Dolphins have their way here. There's not much to say here, really. Uh, there's no miracle explanation for the Raiders to stop the Dolphins from doing, you know, scoring at will. So the Dolphins cover. I mean, there's a couple ways. You just have to, you know, like if if you can somehow sling. Uh, to it into Hill and then take out Waddle all at the same time, then you, you might have a chance. This is, this is a, the Raiders offense is non-existent. Like the only, only reason we were, we were betting <laughs> is the uh, last week on them is because the Jets also, also have a non-existent offense. So um, the head coaching change, they've already had their lift from that. Um, now the, uh, the, the, the team has to play, you know, based just on talent. And, and 
this is a Lamborghini versus a jalopy, right? They 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 talk about how bad Miami does against elite teams. This is just ain't one. They might put seventy up on this guy on these guys. Um. So yeah, Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins cover. Fault Tain. Yeah, I'll make this simple. Dolphins. Dolphins cover, and I think it's as simple as I don't think Oak Oakland. Vegas has any chance to move the ball because you just mentioned Jacobs was their one bright spot. Problem is the Dolphins actually have a really freaking good run defense. They're like one of the best run defenses in the league. And so, you know, like the one thing that you can do is is run, and the one thing that the defense can do is stop the run. Um, I will know, bet you I, that a majority of that run defense is based on the fact that teams don't do it against them. I mean, they've against allowed, the bad teams though. They're they're getting track meet numbers where they're putting up multiple touchdowns and making that team abandon the run midway through the game. So six of their games, five hundred seventy three plays, uh, their defense has covered two hundred forty five of them are rushes. So I mean that's not fifty, but it's it's in the forty five percent range. Hmm. Thirty minutes. 14 to the Dolphins. Hello? Yeah, hello. Hello. Um, oh, sorry, my headset went out. <laughs> no, you're fine. Giants no. and the Commanders. Divisional game. We know that. Let's say this. I'm kind of like, Washington's record doesn't show it, but I'm impressed with this kid Howell, man. <laughs> because he's the number one rated quarterback in the NFL. So Okay, well, yeah, I'm starting him over Sunshine this week and probably every week after that. That would be a good idea. <laughs> I'm really heartbroken with Sunshine right now. But, yeah, he's a great quarterback. But either way, he's not. his stats aren't that great. He's a 66 percentage rate, 27 to 83 yards, uh, 17 TDs, 9 picks. So he's not looking that great, but he plays – I don't know what it is about him, man. He's one of those quarterbacks you just like watching play. Does that make any sense? Yes. Makes plays. He looks good out there. Um, I think this one, we saw how the Giants can play. I think Washington's offense is good enough to really give him a shellacking as well. What's the spread on this one? The spread is the commanders by eight and a half. Mr. They shot me in the buttocks is running the ball well, too. He's scoring some points this season. You know, they've got a few little receivers out there that are pretty nifty. I don't see anything. Danny DeVito and company over there aren't, aren't beating anybody, right? Unless they get a whole bunch of Arnold Schwarzeneggers on their team to help them win. It ain't happening. I'm going to take the uh, commanders here to cover. This is a divisional game, which gives me a little bit of pause with the spread um, because they, they tend to, they tend to defy logic. Um, so is the Cowboys game, by the way. <laughs> it was, it was, the, the butt was coming of, but the, the giants, are one of those teams that do, do not have a functioning offense. Like it's, it's just not. Um, and, and they've lost, you know, again, you've lost too many. I don't think Daniel Jones is the answer, but at least it was a, a, a misfunctioning offense. Now it is a non-functional offense. So, uh, I'll take commanders by nine. There you go. Then. They have no, they don't have a functioning team. That coach is definitely getting fired. Yeah, so so I mean, we're just not going to touch a lot on this one. I mean, the the under on this, the over under is thirty seven points, which tells us there's not going to be a lot of scoring. It's the second lowest over under actually uh, well, in the NFL. Doesn't mean in the NFL for the week. There's not going to be a lot of scoring. It means that they don't think the Giants will score a lot. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I think, I think Washington fair, fair puts up at least twenty eight. Yeah. So. I think the commanders cover, I will say, given the divisional game, I, it, commanders, commanders straight up, no questions asked. The question is, is that eight and a half points, can the commanders be nine points better? And I think the answer is yes. But I would not be shocked if this is like a touchdown game when all of a sudden the... But Long still commanders. With a two point conversion? I'm good. I'd be pretty, <laughs> I'd be pretty shocked this one's a close one. Like, um, I so mean, the, so unless it is, he would be a touchdown and a two point conversion, which is eight points. So we know, we know math must be not strong. In well, well, he means a touchdown and like a two point conversion on another play. <laughs> 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 um, the, uh, the only way I see the giants covering is 
a two score fluke. And that's like a punt return, kick return, interception, pick six, fumble return, something like that. Like they would need like two of those, I think, to, to cover. That I would I would be absolutely be shocked if they had none of that and covered. Um, that's how how much of a lead. Uh and the Cowboys are not gonna not gonna ever meet Ripper's expectations uh until they beat a good team. They don't have a chance because they're playing the Panthers. <sighs> Again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time tonight on bad games or bad teams, but this is one of those games where the Cowboys are going to, you know, they give us a big game, and then the next one gets, hey, look, there's Dakota throwing 18 picks in a game. You know, we had two receivers go 100 and some yards. The team looks great. Everybody's happy. And then we play the, uh, what is Carolina, one and eight, one and eight Carolina Panthers, and the Cowboys lose. I'm not saying they're going to lose. I hope not. But that's really what we're saying. Heartbreak, man. Cowboys give us nothing but heartbreak. I would not be surprised if this ends up a loss. I really wouldn't. Uh, now, statistically, on paper, everything else, I'm going to say they win. They probably, what, double digit also on this one? Ten and a half. Ten and a half. Yeah, I'm going to say they cover. Um, but, again, I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys break all our hearts again because they, you know, it's what they do. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Panthers aren't all that great. Uh, Bryce Young had a, a good game. And then, you know, all the other ones are what they are. They have no running game. We really don't have any receivers. Cowboys should have their way with them in cover. So, Cowboys cover. Uh, I might be crying next week. <laughs> you don't. You don't cry on these, though, right? I don't. I whine. I don't cry. I mean, it doesn't upset me when when we lose ones like this. Um, because you know you're better, right? Like the flukes just happen. Um, I would be like we lose. I guess because we annually lose to the Texans, so <laughs> I guess I guess I'm good with it. Um, yeah, I I wanted the Panthers to be more more plucky at the beginning of the year, and I thought they would be, and they weren't. Um, they don't. Uh, all their acquisitions just didn't seem to to gel right. So, um, using the fantasy relevance, there's a lot of fantasy relevance on the Cowboys. There's very little on the Panthers. Um, really, probably outside of Thielen, there's none, right? So it's 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 one to three or four on the Cowboys. So I the spread is a little high, but I think you guys are going to cover it, even if it's it's not in Dallas. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Cowboys. Cowboys 11. Jesus. Yeah, I, I'm i not going to counter that. Cowboys, Cowboys 11. I just don't. It's not so much that I think the Cowboys are going to, you know, do awesome. I think we are ready for one of those little, oh, crap sort of moments. But I will tell you, uh, I just, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing, quite literally nothing that the Panthers can do. Like they're one of the worst teams in the league, so we'll just leave it there and go go that way. Bryce Young throws for five hundred yards. <laughs> Panthers win, and Ripper Ripper sheds a single tear. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised, right? It's Dakota. Dakota. Uh, okay, so next up we got the uh, uh, the Titans coming to Jacksonville, where we suck butt. I mean, you shouldn't really suck, but that's a whole other story. We're terrible at home. I'm going to give this one another one like I did earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if Jacksonville, you know, drops the ball on this one either. Uh, you've said it yourself. They don't play great against the Titans. Although they're playing at home, so it should be a different game. But uh, Is there a quarterback this week for Titans? Levi's? Blue Jean Boy? How's Blue Jean Boy been the last few weeks? I assume he has settled the hell down. Uh, well, he wasn't good last weekend, I'll tell you that. Don't look. Yeah, <laughs> no, he didn't do very well against the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers haven't been great this year, so... He was 19 for 30, 19 for 39, buck 99 in wow. a pick. But, I mean, the real problem was Derrick Henry was 11 for 24. 
Well, that's so, the Bucks defense stopped them. Right? Yeah, I think I right, mentioned but, the fact but, that the Bucks run defense is pretty solid. But I mean, from a functional standpoint, I mean, he was good. He was he wasn't great, but he wasn't terrible against the Steelers two weeks ago. So yeah, I think Blue Jean Boy has settled down somewhat. Here's the deal, though. The Buccaneer or the Titans made the Buccaneers offense look great. Um, and then, and in their defense, the Buccaneers haven't played too awful with, with Baker, but. I mean, I would like to think that the Jaguars have a better quarterback and better receiving core than the Buccaneers, although Mike Evans would argue that. Um, I would even like to say that they, that they have a better run game than the Buccaneers, whereas the Buccaneers, even Rashard White went off, well, he didn't do too great, right? 20 for 51 isn't great at all, but the pass game was there. Uh, Baker was throwing some nice hits to Mike Evans. Like I said, I think the Jaguars have the better offense compared to the Buccaneers. I just, I don't know, man. I don't know what it is with your boy Sunshine, uh, Wardy, but oof. He's, he's just choking, on man. his back. <laughs> like, I've seen the film. He's He does not not get hit. Like, on the passes he's completing, I'm amazed he's completing them. I just don't see how this 6-3 team is going to lose to the Titans. I, you know, I, I hate to do this, and I don't want to root against them, but, man, I'm close to it. Ugh. I think the Titans' defense is not great, but it isn't horrible either. Um, they just couldn't put up any points, man. I think that, that their rookie quarterback is and all that. Is he a rookie, Levi's? Blue Jim Boy? Mm-hmm. Not great. The running game, without having King Henry running the ball, you're in real trouble. Um, Jacksonville's run stop, mm, mediocre at best. What do you think? Oh, they're 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 really good against stopping it. Well, CMC, yeah. not so much. Everybody else? Statistically, they're one of the best teams in the league on, yeah. against the run. So, Look, I'm not starting Sunshine this week, so he's going to have a bounce back week, of course. And yeah. have like 18 touchdowns. Correct. So I'm, what's the spread? Three or four points? Uh, Jag seven. Jag seven. Oof. Well, with a rookie quarterback, yeah, I'll take it. Jags cover. I don't think the Titans quarterback is going to do very good for him. And I think that affects the whole game, run game, pass game, everything. And I, I think that's where the Titans problem is, is the rookie quarterback. Against this team, I think Sunshine has a great day. The defense does what it has to do. And, of course, I didn't start him, so he's throwing for 492 yards and five touchdowns. Uh, the Titans are not designed to beat the Jags. Um, I will say that. And then, like throw some salt over my shoulder or something. Um, it's, you know, because basically designed to win against your teams and the, this Titan team is not not that way. Um, they can't rush the passer. That That's the thing that would, would kill us. They're, they're not going to do that. Um, they're not going to stop the run, especially they've, they've got this little trick now where they're getting ETN in space, um, which does not matter against the 49ers because – You've got this linebacker core that's pretty good. Um, uh, so they can't rush the passer. They can't stop the run. On the flip side, all they really have is Henry. And our defense is, is no matter what happened last week, is still pretty good. Um, so uh, Jags by eight. Bounce back game. If it's not a bounce back game, I'm going to be really sad. So I just pulled up some points for numbers, and uh, if I give you the AFC South total points scored, Jacksonville, Houston, Indianapolis, and Tennessee, what do you give me order on that one for just points scored? It's used to, I would guess Houston, Jacksonville. It's Indianapolis, Houston, Jacksonville, Tennessee in that order. Yeah. Which is interesting to me because the Jaguars' offense looks awesome. Between the 20s. You, and you you said that, I believe, last weekend or last week. I remember you saying in the last couple of weeks, they, they're they great until they get the red zone and then it's all over. Well, and it's a product um, of the line, right? Because it good. Because what happens is, but because because quite frankly, Lawrence is, is throwing some darts while he's getting just right. blasted. And then you get to the 20 and now the field's compressed. You don't have to worry about the deep ball, right? Now you can compress it in and that even amplifies your offensive line's inability to block. Because now you 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 coverage is you know defense can actually cover that a little better and 
bring an extra person and it's just it's just not there's no space for crossing routes and stuff like that it's just it's a it's a bad it's always the last thing on younger offenses to develop is that is that red zone threat yep yeah so i i think jacksonville takes us i think they cover i i just i don't see as you said i don't think tennessee's ready to win it period um that being said uh Trevor is the fourth or the seventh most sacked quarterback in the NFL right now. Our line's bad. <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling you, he is getting the ball. He's got, I want to say he's a second or third. He's in the top five and getting the ball out of his hand. He's doing it in two seconds. And he's got that many sacks. Right. I can't tell you how bad this line is. Like it's terrible. So, uh, so interesting number for you. He being, we'll call him seventh in the league, seventh, eighth in the league, and sacks taken. He's half of the worst guy in the league. The worst guy in the league is just getting the crap beat out of him. And we just talked about him. In uh, Sam Howell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sammy. Sammy Smasher. All righty then. Are we all on the Jaguar stream? And we had four, we had four turnovers last week, too. Like we gave them four, we didn't have any. I, well, I was gonna say I, the, Niner, th- the Niners. Like you can't really. Talk I about don't that think game. we were as bad as that game showed us. I hope so. Moving on. All right. The Cardinals and the Texans. Let's go, Car- Kyler. Go, Kyler. I need you to win one more, baby. Why? Because I because Texans are legit, dude. They they look good. Although Kyler being back, eh, I hate to say it. I mean, not that it makes a well a little bit, right? They won. It makes a yeah. difference. Well, they won. All right, we I'm lost. Pulling you. up the game real quick. I'm here. Oh yeah, they beat the Falcons. Come on now. And I'm pulling up the game so I can see stats. Just taking a bit. He had a game-winning drive. I saw that. That's not much. Kyler was 19 of 32, 249, zero touchdowns, and one pick. He was 6 for 33 on the ground, though, for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. But isn't that pretty much prototypical Kyler, though? Mm-hmm. No, he's yeah. a little... He was... Uh, in the heyday, he was a little better on the offense, right? Throwing, he was a little better throwing. He was a little better running too. He beat the Falcons. He, let's, yep. Let's be honest. The Falcons. And they beat the Falcons on a kick field goal at the end of the game too. Correct. With uh, two different quarterbacks that aren't very good at all. Two who, quarterbacks are not equal to one quarterback. But who on his team does he have? Nobody. On so a, on the on Falcons, a... I can tell you they've got Kyle Pitts. They've got um, Drake London. They've got two receivers. running backs. You got to take the receivers out because they don't have a quarterback. Okay, well, you got two running, three running backs because you got a running back, a quarterback. Uh, yeah. If all you're depending upon is your running game, yes. That's I mean, and what did. what did Kyler? What did Kyler have? He had fifty fifty Brown, and nobody. Connor's else. back. James Connor is back. Oh, and he Con- ran for seventy three yards. Okay, and James Connor. Yes. Well, neither one of those teams is great. Right? I mean, I think I chose this one based on uh, the stronger bird. <laughs> and, and I was wrong. Yeah. I mean, neither one of those teams is great. Now, this story, though, you know, a carnal and a bull. I mean, if I got to go by mascot, definitely going bull wise. But aside from that, I don't think that uh, Kyler Murray is going to be enough to beat the Texans, to be honest. I think uh, Stroud is looking like maybe the uh, rookie of the year. I wouldn't say MVP, but definitely rookie of the year. I mean, the kid has 2,600 plus yards, 15 touchdowns, two picks. His percentage, completion percentage is a little low at 61%, but not too low below the average, right? They've got a couple of good running backs. I know Pierce is hurt, but Singletary's there. They've got definitely a couple of great receivers. Collins should be back this week, right? So they're, they, they, he's, they're he's, not, he's on the injury report. Not a bad team at all. I think they're good enough way better than what the Cardinals bring to the table and will win this game. What is the spread on it, though? Uh, Texas 5. Yeah. 
I think Texas cover. I think they, they win this. I'm going to go by seven, but I think they win by a lot more than that. But Murray will definitely keep it interesting with his feet, but Texans are too much for this kid. Uh, I think you're wrong. I think the Cards win this one. I just, I, I think, I think Murray is that kind of dynamic. He is, I, he's an athlete. We We said it before. Like, I would not, I would not want him as a foundation. Like, if he was my quarterback, I'd be like, damn, like, that sucks. <laughs> like, it was like having Minshew, right? Like, you're like, well, we're not going to win traditionally, but he's that kind of guy. If the game's close, he'll get you. Um, and I don't think the Texans' defense is good enough to not keep it close. So I think they're going to keep it close, and I think he wins one in the end. I, I just, that's what I do. On that flip side, CJ Shroud could do it, but, um, I I just feel the Cardinals are going to win. So Cardinals. So I am going to be 100% on board in C.J. Stroud, I trust. And the reason I say that is as simple as you said, Kyler's got no weapons. Who does Stroud have for weapons? I mean, Damian Pierce hasn't done squat this year. He's got Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and Noah Brown as his receiving core with Dalton Schultz. None of those guys are like screaming, oh my God. But yet he's put up you know, he's put up 2,600 yards of passing. So it's not like he's got a point where he's, you know, he's got that stud wide receiver or anything like that. Stroud's just a baller. And yeah, Stroud's not in the MVP conversation, but Vegas has odds against him. He's 30 to one for the MVP right now. Now he's sixth overall or seventh overall. And they, Vegas thinks Josh Allen has a better shot, which I'm not sure exactly how that works, but. but I, I, I don't... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, if it comes down to I got to choose, and and I'm sorry for for our friend who loves the Cardinals and loves the little people, but if I have to choose between C.J. Stroud or Kyler Murray to win a game, ball hand, you know, game on the line, I'm taking Stroud at this point. I'm a, I'm a Stroud or die guy. Huh. So that's that's Texans and Texans cover. All right. Next up, we've got the Buccaneers playing the 49ers, and the 49ers are favored by 11 and a half. That's a lot. Um, I think Baker Mayfield is definitely a, a plucky little dude, right? Like, that guy is definitely fighting for his start or career of his whole season, right? Every... Everything moving forward, Baker's fighting for, right? Because it seems like he's on the verge of getting benched anywhere he's at now at this point. Um, and that's because he blows up sometimes, right? He's done a fairly well job. Obviously, the record is four and five, but he hasn't. He doesn't look horrible out there. With all that said, Mike Evans as well, great. <laughs> where would you uh, before you move on? Where would you put him? On tiers, let's, definitely not the top tier. Well, I know, but let's say number wise on quarterback. Outside the top ten, maybe like eleven or twelve. You'd say he's maybe, like, the, yeah, maybe top ten, maybe at the tenth spot. Okay, just wonder. You break down all the quarterbacks, you know, because there's not a lot of good, great quarterbacks right now. Correct. You can literally call call out the quarterbacks you would want to. If you had to pick the best five quarterbacks to draft, it'd be easy. Outside of that, it's like, ugh, right? gets a little more difficult a little more cloudy um at this point who really would you want even Allen kind of falls out of the top five right now sunshine is not in the top five based on right now i mean I, in my head the top five right now it's Mahomes still no matter what the hell the numbers say it i'd put hurts in the top five now which i wouldn't have at the beginning of the year um dax possibly in the top five um, <laughs> Statistically, yes, he's at five. Um, Howell's looking like he's top five, for God's sakes, you know. Um, Stroud. and then Stroud. Yeah. Tua, Tua's kind of in the conversation too, just based on weapons. Correct. You know, Purdy without those but, three but, horrible games. Maybe. But none of these, you're you're outside of Mahomes. There's none of them that you're sold on, right? Correct. I'm not. You know, there's one surprising one that you're going to freak out on. And if I'm right on his stats, it would be Russell Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe not yardage, but, man, he's not doing a lot of picks this season. Yeah. Uh, 18, 18 touchdowns, four picks. Not bad. 
Um, it's an interesting because depending on if you go by QBR or the rating, Wilson's middle of the road for QBR, but he's top four for rating. Crazy. Uh, for this game, though, with all that said, <laughs> I think the 49ers come in here and, and beat on the, the Buccaneers. It's Where is it at? In San, it's in San, Fran- San, in San Francisco. They play fabulous when they're in San Francisco, so they definitely <laughs> definitely gonna give Tampa a beating. Is it a twelve point beating? That is the question. Uh, yes. Fourteen points. Alright. Um as much as Baker wants to be plucky, it's not his week. I always worry when a team blows up because the next week they next week they tend to come back to Earth, but I've also I I saw the Ohio State connection, and let me tell you, oh my God, having Chase Young on one side and Bosa on the other, that's just not fair. Like it's just not fair. It's, and the Bucks don't have a good line. Like they're they're not gonna be able. I I, I don't see the Bucks running the ball. I don't see. I see Baker going. Oh God, one of those two guys is always about to pound me in the turf. Um. Yeah, I, I I see the 49ers destroying him, the 49ers covering. Pound you in the what? They just pound you in the turf. Hmm. The Fabulous. T- the tough. Yeah, I, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. I think the Niners and the Niners cover, and I think it has less to do with the offense and more to do with the fact that the Niners have, I mean, that defense is scary. like, And it's as simple as they can rush for drop seven into coverage or, you know, drop, do whatever they want. They don't, have to, f- they don't have to rush four anymore. They can rush two. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, okay, right. I mean, but that's my point is they don't need to blitz. They don't need to bring extra people to get the pressure. And when you do that, your defense just looks better, period. Well, and your I don't, is better. I don't know what it was like in three game losing streak. I imagine teams were just basically Double cut, double teaming Bosa. You don't have that option right now. Like you can't double team Bosa and Young and Warner from a linebacker blitz. Like you just can't. Like you're like that's not enough people anymore. <laughs> you know, unless you're running one man routes, like you're you're done. Um, yeah. So I, I mean. Whatever they had in their three-day game losing streak, I think that is donezo. So, um, yeah, good times. Uh, next up, we got the Jets going to the Bills. Jets and the Bills, great. So, will uh, Allen throw another uh, three picks? Is that the big question here? Ugh. He's playing as horrible as Sunshine is right now. Buddy disconnected from your channel. Oh, no, it was Harley. You know so we're not going to sit here and we're think that good. the Jets' offense is doing any good, right? They're having problems of their own, um, and I think that the Buffalo defense is horrible as well. So this is a game where the Jets might score some points. This is a game where we might be tricked into thinking, "Ah, oh, Jets have this one easy," and then all of a sudden, you know. Allen's throwing three picks and the Jets are scoring multiple touchdowns because the Buffalo Bills forgot how to play defense. That's really how it feels right now. I think the bright spot for the Bills, honestly, for me right now is Cook. I think Cook has been running fairly well. I think he'll continue to get better. They still have uh, Mr. Prima Donna over there, Diggs, but I, I, I just don't know what it is with Allen. His completion rate is great. But he's throwing a lot of picks, man. He has 19 TDs and 11 picks. Now, do I think the Jets are going to win? Uh, they kind of have his number when it comes to picks, right? However, I think Allen is kind of like a chip on the shoulder from the last game where he threw, who was it, three picks, correct? Three or four, the yeah. Last time they met up. Yeah, they, they come in here with a chip on their shoulder. The problem is, honestly, is they have no defense. And teams are running amok on them. And, and the good thing for them is the Jets have no offense. <laughs> and that's the truth, right? So this may be a game where... Allen just doesn't have to throw three picks to, or doesn't have to throw three picks to lose or whatnot. However you want to look at that. But I think Allen pulls it off. Uh, what's the spread on this one? Bill seven. Yeah, I think the Bills will cover. I, they're bad, but so are the Jets. 
They have no offense that will compete against a bad defense against the Bills. I think the Bills offense is just way too much for the Jets. I think the first game was kind of fluky as far as the three picks. I don't think Allen does that again. Uh, I think the Bills win this one. Yeah, I, I... So, the Bills' problems are because of their injuries. Like, they have no linebacking core right now, which is why they can't stop the run, right? You, you got... You've got linebackers that have to fill gaps. If they don't fill gaps, you're going to give up yardage in the run game. Um, and that's, you know, that hasn't shown throughout the year. But once once you can, once you, they say two things. you got to be able to run the ball and stop the run. Like, that's what you have to do. And the Bills can't do either. So they're dysfunctional right now, and they're not going to be very good, I think, going on. They'll probably be. I think I think I had him at ten and six in the beginning of the year, and I I see him I see him being getting that mark. Um, the flip side is the Jets have a non functional offense right now; like they can't do anything. So, um, the Bills should be able to lean on the Jets just because of their, you know, punt punt interception, and as long as Allen doesn't throw four picks and two pick sixes, they should be able to get this game out. Um, don't know they'll get eight. I'm a little worried about that line. Um, but I think, again, I'm going with the Jets are just a non-functioning offense, so Bills cover. So, you know, if I hadn't watched the Broncos-Bills game and watched Josh Allen looks, look absolutely terrible, I, I, I just... Well, and I and I think it's not even Josh Allen that's the real problem. It's that James Cook looks like he's just I, – I don't know what's going on with that. Like, I don't get that at all. So, um, you know, he's running – he's run for – he runs for 5.1 a game. But when your coach is like, well, you fumble once, I'm going to bench you for a half when you're trying to win a ball game. Like, and you've got nobody else because, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Latavius Murray isn't exactly um, – you know, a scary threat anymore. So I think the Bills win this one. I I just don't have them covering. I really don't. I don't. I don't see the Bills putting together an offensive game to blow the Jets out. And this is a divisional game. Or uh, sorry, not divisional, New York game. So that changes things a little bit too, because the Jets always play the Bills well. It's a divisional game. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I was like, I thought it was, but my brain is not processing it. Yeah. Um, um, I, I just I don't yeah. I don't see the Jets winning the game, but I also don't see the Bills walking away with this one. So yeah, I I don't I don't either. But the the Jet I just again the Jets are dysfunctional. I think they're one of the the, the offenses are just no not not this not this year. So, so unless the, Aaron the Rodgers gets back. Yep, there you go. Thanks. I just got on the spreadsheet so. Uh, next up, we got the Seahawks, your Seahawks and the Rams. Yeah, Rams. Oof. This one is, so it's in LA and I mean, the Seahawks defense looked good, but I mean, God, Geno Smith has looked terrible. Like in everybody's like, well, it's not Geno's fault, or at least, you know, they say it's not Geno's fault, but you start going and looking at it and he's thrown for 11 touchdowns, seven interceptions 19 sacks but he's not making good ball decisions like he's not he's not being a good quarterback to the point where seattle's starting to talk about uh drew lock potentially for the rest of the year which i mean yeah and gino we trust and all that jazz but you know he is not doing what he did last season by any stretch of the imagination and they've got better weapons this year i thought he made good decisions on the the game the game winning drive well, yes, on the game-winning drive he did, but if I mean that game should not have been that close. Like they didn't. I mean they were down. You know, it wasn't until halfway through the third quarter, or part what ten minutes into the third quarter, when K nine decided to broke break that sixty-four yard, you know, screen pass. If you'll yell, yeah, it was a pass, but it was essentially the check down where Kenneth Walker just said, "Okay, my ball, I'm going." Um. I think the Rams win this one. I really do. I don't like it. The homer in me says they don't, but you know, I'm going to take the Rams and I'm going to take the Rams covering on this one. And I just, I mean, it hurts, pains me to say it. I just don't think the Seahawks are going to do it this time. 
This is a tough one. I, I think you're right in the fact that Gino hasn't been Gino of, well, last year anyways. <laughs> Um, I, I still think that the Seahawks have some some umph to them, right? Um, they're six and three for a reason. I, everybody has bad games. I mean, we can put Gino in the book in the in the same boat as Allen right now, or Sunshine, or a couple other quarterbacks that you expect to do better that aren't doing very well. However, the Rams have a lot of firepower. It, it, it's funny how they're three and six when they have these this receiving core that probably competes for the best receiving core in the NFL right now. Uh, I think their biggest problem is kind of the run game. I think Tyron Williams, I think he's back either this week or next week, correct? Can we check on that? That, yes. that could make a difference, man. Yes, he gets back this week? No, yes, we can check on that. Oh. And by yes, I mean striker. <laughs> they have the, the, what we call it, the four-letter receivers. Um, Puka, Tuka, and Cup. I think if the Rams had, and I'm going to have to I hate to say it, but a non-sweet pickles retirement bus quarterback, like they do in Stafford, whose completion rate is under 60% horrible. You know, for having the receivers you have and having the TDs to interception ratio is just bad. You know, some quarterbacks, it's time for them to go out and pass them, man. And I still believe Wilson is too, but Stafford is one of them we spoke about last year that I think should have been in the Sweet Pickles retirement bus. Um, you know, but again, who's next, right? Who do they have? What what What's Stetson. better than him? Well, yeah, isn't he hurt? I mean, I you ask you who's so, next. so Kyron, Kyron is not going to be playing against the Seahawks. He will play Week 12 against the Cardinals. I still think the Seahawks defense is is not bad. Um, it's a tough one. It really is. To me, it's kind of a coin flip. Even though one six and three and one's three and six, just based on some of the play the Seahawks have. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go with your Seahawks this year, man. What's the spread? One. For the Seahawks? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying the Seahawks cover here. You're going to win this one with a nice little field goal at the end. I I hate this team. <laughs> the Seahawks or the Rams? The Seahawks. I, oh, okay. I just can't pick them, like, at all. Because you go, you look at them and you go, they got DK, they've got, you know, Lockett, they've got this running back who's a stud, and, you know, Geno wasn't terrible last year. They've got a, a better-than-average defense, and yet, you know, they do like they do the Ravens game and they do like they did, you know, last week they were, you know, the commanders aren't very good and they're, you know, like you said, they, they can't put them away. And I go, I just can't, I can't figure the team out. Um, I think that the Rams at home off a bye win. And that gives them a chance to get their health up, you know, and, and the reason I think part of the reason they're three and six is they, Already, they, I think they already had their set with the Niners, right? So that's that's the two automatic losses, um, were, were two of them, and then you know, they got some some the, their quarterback got banged up in the Niners game, and it carried over. So I I'm assuming Stafford's going to be okay off the the bye. Old people need a, a week of extra rest, so I'm assuming that, and I'm assuming they win. But knowing me, I can't pick the damn Seahawks. So Gene will have 500 yards, and they'll rush rush with 250. But I'm going Rams. The uh, the Homer in me hopes you're you're wrong, and that Ripper wins this one. But yeah, but you you that. you even picked the Rams, so <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, damn. Hey, I'm trying I'm trying to win the straight up here. Yeah. Uh, I, I figured I'm. Lost on the uh, the Vegas line, but straight up, I still have a shot at. It, I so. feel terrible. Uh, I feel terrible picking against my team, even last week when I probably should have. Um, I don't know why everyone's getting five hundred yards. It just seems like a round number. Um, okay, that, that's uh, that's wordy math for you, Carly, Correct. just in case you were wondering. Uh, okay, Vikings and Bronx. Vikings and the Bronx. Two and a half Denver favorite in Denver. All right, let's start off with you can't you can't go against the pastor or not. You just can't. He he's on fire right now, and that's the truth. The guy is is uh, living a dream, I think. Uh, from uh, what do you want to call? What do they call the journeyman quarterback, right? Because he's been to a few teams to in the spotlight now, which he is. Uh, I think he's been to all the teams. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's doing the tour. He's yeah, watching he... more teams. Go. He'll be on the Cowboys next month. Exactly. Uh, Just yeah, as long as the last stop is Cleveland. I don't know what it is about Dobbs, but he's blessed right now, man. He's getting really lucky, right? He he's just playing well. Um, he came into the Vikings really practiced his cadence right before the game, right? That they were saying. And again, though, he stepped into a pretty good offense. That's not the uh, well, pretty good passing game. Uh, run game still needs a lot of help, right? But you know, Dobbs can move on his feet a little bit. On the other side of it, the Broncos' defense is. Which, which, uh, which, before you move on, what does that say about Cousins? It, 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 it's the fact that a quarterback can be signed off the street and do what Dobbs is doing, does it sour how you look at Cousins? Maybe. It tells me that their quarterback, their coaching staff is phenomenal, man. That's what that tells me. Yeah. I mean, if you can get a guy in there and get him game ready, or or really, honestly, he's just really that intelligent, man. How he isn't a star, that's the big question, right? Like, how has Dobbs not ever found a home? Why has he been passed around so much? That's the question. Well, how many years has he been in the league? Well, but it's the same. I mean, Gino has the same question, right? Like, it, No, because G- Gino has... was a higher round pick, right? Yeah. Right. So he was like a six-rounder. And and when you're that low in the draft, you know what it is, right? You don't have the measurements. You're missing something. Arm strength, height, hand, hand size. There's a there's a red flag. That's why you get picked in the sixth round. Tom Brady was slow white guy, not very tall, you know, not a very good arm. I mean, he was a fourth round pick in uh, 2017 to Pittsburgh, which, I mean, that was right during the, uh, what's his name? Roethlisberger era. Roethlisberger error. So, I mean, that's a good pick for a backup there. Like, it's not like he, I mean, they didn't, they didn't pick him with the intention of him replacing Roethlisberger. They had picked him with the intention of he's a backup. Yeah. And, and frankly, he looks like the new running quarterback that the 2017, 2018 league started to see. I think so it's the uh, lack of eyebrows. That's alopecia. Well, so, so we're, we're, I mean, I mean, sometimes it's, Sometimes it can be also that the game slows down for you slower than it does some of the other guys. And maybe he's a really smart guy, but maybe he's now gotten a better grasp of how NFL defenses work, and he does have the tools to do it. I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, he's I mean, a he smart did, guy, right? His, his numbers, I mean, he's 6'3", 210, 220, somewhere in that range. He doesn't have super great arm length. And I think his hand size actually is small now that I'm looking at it. So, well, you know what they say about game, guys with small hands? They can't hold Broncos on to the have, football. <laughs> Broncos, have, <laughs> Broncos have no defense. The offense on the Vikings is great. What's the spread again, you said? I didn't. I oh, maybe I didn't. Um, Broncos two and a half. Two point five. I'm going to say the Vikings uh, win this one. I, I know that uh, Wilson's playing well, but they don't have a very good defense. And I think the Vikings overall, on both sides of the ball, well, offensively, they're great. Uh, defensively, they're middle of the road, in my opinion. But I think it'll be enough to beat the Broncos. I'm going with the uh, Minnesota Vikings. And Dobbs does it again. Dobbs has a career season, and uh, they uh, put Cousins on the uh, see you later bus. He'll live at the Cowboys, probably. Uh, it's a mile high. Yeah. And, uh, Dobbs isn't that good. <laughs> so, <laughs> Russell Wilson beats him at home. Broncos are on the streak right now, man. They're doing good. So, I'm I'm going with the Broncos. Broncos to win at home by three. So, so on Dobbs, uh, he does have smaller than average hands, and that was right in the period where the hand size was a huge thing. Also, he has smaller than average arm length, which doesn't help. So that's why he dropped to the fourth round. That being said, the game. Um, I wonder what his arm. I, I I know there's real. I mean, there's speed tests and stuff, but I wonder what his arm strength is. Right. Yeah. They didn't. I don't have. Yeah. That, that's that's not something you would. That, but, yeah. But. Uh, yeah. So this is this is one of those weird games where. You know, Denver came out and looked really good. 
but was that them looking really good or Buffalo just looking terrible? Because, I mean, yeah, Buffalo turned over the ball a bunch of times, but Josh Allen does that. So, and Dobbs is not that. I, I, I got to go the Vikings and I got to go the Vikings cover or Vikings. I guess the Broncos don't cover on this one. Um, I just, in, in the past or not, I trust. Yeah, I can't remember. Who did the Broncos play before they beat the Bills? Mm. They're on tear. It was the Chiefs, if you don't know that. Yeah, the Mahomes is giving them a break. All righty then. Uh, Monday Night Football, we got a team playing another team. Uh, the Eagles and the Chiefs and probably the game of the week. Definitely I mean, a great Monday night matchup. You got a good bookend to start the week in Cincinnati, Baltimore, and then a great bookend to end the week. Agreed. I, I agree. I think this is uh, probably the only two top games we really want to watch all week as far as, you know, quality games anyways, right? Which will be uh, the bookends, Cincinnati, Baltimore, and this game right here, Philly KC. It's going to be a good one, man. I, I think that um, – Philadelphia plays really well. They did give up some points to Dakota and the Dallas Cowboys. I think the Chiefs have a better offense than that, in my opinion. Um, the run game is almost adequately the same to the Dallas Cowboys. It's the pass game. Lacks a little bit compared compared to the receivers the quarter that Cowboys have. But then again, you know, the Chiefs have Kels. Um, it's going to be a good game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout either way. What's the spread on it? Chiefs by, two and a half. Chiefs by two and a half. I think the Chiefs defense is going to be the difference here. Honestly, I think the Chiefs defense is probably a little better than, than Philly's. Uh, passing game, obviously, you've got Mahomes, so big difference. The run game on the Philly side is a little better than the Chiefs. Uh, it's going to be a close game. Uh, tough to go against Mahomes in any game, honestly. So I'm going to stick to it. I'm going with the Chiefs in this one. To cover. Chiefs to cover. Um... It is a rusted Chiefs team off a bye at home on Monday night in the loudest stadium, period. Uh, the Kelsey brothers going at it again. Philly's going to want to get revenge for the Super Bowl, but it, this game doesn't matter. I think that's the edge Philly might have. Um, but I can't, I can't go against Mahomes. I mean, Mahomes is... This is the kind of time, like, if they're going to make a run, this is when they get their stuff together. They came off, you know, they lost before they went on on the bye um, to Denver. Uh, they don't want to lose two in a row. I just, I can't go against my homes in Kansas City um, on Monday Night Football. So, that Chiefs. So uh, I told you I was going to make a Taylor Swift reference. So karma is the guy coming home to on the Chiefs coming home to me. Um, I mean, this is going to be a great game. It just is, period. And I, my gut says the Eagles. I want to take the Eagles, but I think the Chiefs being rested at home. Um, I think we're, I think we may be looking at a Super Bowl preview here. I really do. Um, and I'm going to take the Chiefs, although my gut, Man, the numbers are telling me take the Chiefs to guts and take the Eagles. So we'll take the Chiefs and Chiefs to cover. But the man. numbers are telling you to take the Chiefs? Mm-hmm. What numbers? No, numbers tell me to take numbers tell me to take the Eagles. That's why I'm okay. That's what, I like. <laughs> what numbers are you looking at? <laughs> no, number, numbers tell me to take the Eagles. The gut is saying take the Chiefs. I said that backwards, sorry. Yeah, no, I, that makes sense. So Chiefs cover? Chiefs cover. All right. Uh I'm gonna do this just to recap. Uh, so we can maybe cut these in the shorts later on. Um, so Ripper's got the Ravens by four, uh, the Browns by two, the Lions by nine, the Chargers by four, the Dolphins by 14, Commanders by nine, the Cowboys by 11, Jags by eight, Texas by seven, 49ers by 14, the Bills by eight, the Seahawks uh, in the upset, the Vikings in the upset, and the Chiefs by three. Um I had the Ravens by four, the Browns by two, the Lions by nine, the Packers in the upset, the Dolphins by 14, Commanders by nine, the Cowboys by 11, the Jags by eight, Cardinals in an upset, the 49ers by 14, Bills by eight, the Rams in an upset, the Broncos in an upset, and the Chiefs by three. 
And then Strikers got the Ravens by four, the Browns by two, the Lions by four, the Packers in an upset, Dolphins by 14, Commanders by nine, Cowboys by 11, Jags by eight, Texans by seven, 49ers by 14, the Bills by four, the Rams in an upset, the Vikings in an upset, and the Chiefs by three. <sighs> uh, doing really good, Ripper. Uh, 91, 54 overall. Yeah. Straight up. 85, 64, 91, and 57. one. I'm sorry, 91, 57. Um, Ripper, Stryker wanted to add those three losses real quick. Damn. Um, 85, 64, and one against the spreads. You're making some money. So, yeah. um, doing good. I, I I pulled the numbers a few weeks back, and we were, I, I sent them to you. We were higher than, like, an entire bracket. Of, of analysts that are picking it so pretty good for people who don't know um don't know much as far as like the the day-to-day -day information they get so um good job overall uh anything before we move on no i think that uh you know as far as games that we want to watch we already went over that the bookend i don't think there's anything else that really stands out as far as matchups this week um Maybe Jacksonville, Tennessee, just because it's interdivision, it's a good game. Uh, you know, maybe San Fran, Tampa Bay, just to see if uh, Baker, Baker can pull something off. The <laughs> Jets Buffalo game might be a, a good one to watch too. Denver, Minnesota. Honestly, I think that 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 past or not, as we say, is going to uh, pull some ratings towards Minnesota just because everybody likes that Cinderella kind of story, right? Yeah, It'll be that. But there are some good games. Cleveland, Pittsburgh should be a good game to watch. Dallas Carolina, no. <laughs> I'll watch it because I'm a Cowboys fan, but ugh. And you're going to be yeah. half watching it unless the score is tight, right? Correct. I'll, I'll be flipping to the Red Zone channel and back yeah. to the game for sure. But I'm really looking forward to the Monday night game and the Thursday night game. Both those games should be fairly good. I I, I, I hope that uh, Burrow and company come up and play a better game than they've been lately, but the bookend game should be really good. We should start our NFL week and end our NFL week pretty well. Uh, the the Eagles are, I think right now. I mean, the Eagles are seven and one. I eight think one. eight and one. They're 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 the. I mean, the and the Niners had a three game spill like before they reloaded. I, I I think the Eagles until. <laughs> I, I see the Eagles and the Forty ers destined for a showdown. Uh, depending on how the playoffs work, you know, it depends on where they meet. But, um, they're they're. I think they're solidly above everything else. Like I think that I, I do think the Chiefs can put up a fight, and until they get beaten, I'll I'll think that because Mahomes. But I don't see a lot in the AFC. I, like I don't know who the number two is in the AFC. I would say the Jags, and then last week happened, and you go, well, that's that's over. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Already. yeah, I would disagree with that. I think the Jaguars are still top two. I mean, if they get it back together, I agree. I mean, don't be surprised if the Texans come out of some kind of dark horse out of nowhere, right? The Ravens are still there in the AFC. Uh, you know, Chiefs, Ravens. Yeah, I can could, I could see that. We can't really out, uh, count out the Dolphins either, man. They really do have a great offense. In the NFC, though, I think I think the Lions are the dark horse in the NFC for me right now. I know yeah, we've said that, that, that makes before. Sense. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, another week in the books. Great job, guys. Good stuff. Thank you. Happy.